Hello everyone and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on Agile Tester Extension Certification. Today we are looking into the next topic which is the third uh, chapter of the series and 3.3 .3, Techniques in Agile Project where the first topic we are talking about is acceptance criteria, adequate coverage and other informations for the testing. Let's understand the same in more detail. When you generally talk about acceptance criteria, the first thing is to understand that whenever a requirement is being created, we also talk about understanding that what our acceptance criteria should basically address. And here are a few of the detailed points to understand the same, that what generally an acceptance criteria should address. We talk about functional behavior, which is more important in terms of determining what the functionality should all about be. Following that, we have quality characteristics, which also deals with non-functional parameters of a particular requirement. Scenarios, use cases, which generally help us to understand what would be the exact control flow of an application would be. Business rules, as at other part of it, generally the condition, procedures and constraints could be dealt with as a part of it. We could include that as a part of extreme acceptance criteria as well. Ex Internal interfaces, which is the third-party dependencies, if you think that there are any external softwares which are contributing to your product, it is also to be considered as a part of acceptance criteria. Constraints, additionally, input to the business rules as well, and following that, the data definitions, which generally allows what kind of data source you have, data pool you have, which could be uh, participating in your testing activities and also determining including that whether this data is relevant to this particular functionality or this particular module or not. So valid set of data would be really important to be considered as a part of acceptance criteria as well. Following that we are talking about the different test levels which are conducted as a part of agile testing where definition of done for each test level is very important and critical to be determined. So for each level, we are going to understand here and see what exactly could be the more important part to be considered when determining what is definition of done. So for unit testing, we have definition of done as 100% decision coverage where possible with careful reviews of any infeasible parts. Static analysis performed on all codes, no unresolved major defects, no unknown unacceptable technical depths remaining in the design and the code, all code unit tests and unit test results reviewed, all unit tests automated, and important characteristics are within the agreed limits. So altogether when you talk about unit testing it generally stands for making sure at the unit level every single activity is performed and they have the uh, criteria being met and the threshold being achieved. There should be not be any kind of loopholes which could leak the defect from unit to the next level that is integration. Similarly for integration testing the definition of done will be uniquely identified and they could be like all function requirements are tested including both positive and negatives and of course including the number of size, test, complexity and risk involved. All interfaces between unit are tested, all quality risk covered according to the agreed extent of testing. No unresolved major defects are remaining. All defects found are reported. All regression tests automated where possible with all automated tests stored in a common repository. So in this point of time we talk about the data flow between the modules and we also assure that the, any kind of risk which were associated with integration is also addressed as a part of it. Do make sure that your defects are not passing from here in this particular level to another level. So the level specific defect should be closed there. And also making sure that the most other things are automated. When it comes to the next one, when talking about system testing, we do have different definition of done for that as well. And to end test of user stories, feature and function as system test addresses the end-to-end -end testing of a product. All users personas are covered. That is from the end user perspective. The most important quality characteristics of systems are covered. Testing done in a production-like environments, including all hardware and software for all supported configurations to the extent possible. All quality risk covered according to the agreed extent of testing. All regression tests are automated where possible with all automated tests stored in a common repository. All defects found are reported and possibly fixed in the given timeline. 
No unresolved major defects should pass on or leak from this level to another one. So as you summarize here, when you talk about system testing, we generally address additional things with comparison to integration as well, where we have a lot of things to be taken care, including making sure the defects are not open and critical defects are resolved well within. So I think that's all from this particular tutorial team. This is just the part one of this topic. As the topic is quite lengthy, we'll be having two different parts of it. So stay tuned for the upcoming tutorial on this particular series. We'll be getting back to you with the part two of this section. And till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding. Thanks for watching the video. Happy learning.